All right, on this week's Roundtable podcast, we've got Eric, no nickname Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm doing good. We've got Tate, the big papa, Litchfield. Tate, can any sleep? Oh, uh, yeah, plenty. Just oh, kidding. good. <laughs> <laughs> we've got the Zen master, breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing, Mike Zeno. <laughs> I don't know how I'm doing. I purposely haven't looked at this poll on Facebook, and I guess we're going to find out today. So I'm really not sure how I'm doing right now, Mark. <laughs> well, I can tell you, like, when people ask me how I'm doing, I always say pulse is normal, respiration's fine. If I were you and I were going to answer that question, I'd say pulse is <laughs> elevated, respiration is uh, not fine at all. Well, let's see. Bearland Aaron is on the podcast. Bearland Aaron, how are you? Brakes good, tires fair. There you go. Brakes good, tires fair. In Amishville. Fair. In Amishville. It never gets old, does it, Scott? It never, hey, listen, he came out swinging us a couple weeks ago, <laughs> you and I. So I just think that I'm not going to let up on him. It's fair game. It's fair game. And last but not least, we've got Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. And most importantly, if you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? I'm great, Mark. How are you? I'm good. How's that, uh, that accounting course? Uh, the accounting class was really, really good. Uh, we had uh, 75 attendees. I think it's up to 79 now, 79 attendees. And um, it was a, supposed to be a four-hour class. It actually turned out to be a five-hour class. So it, I went over by an hour. And um, the feedback that I got was really good. I, I mean, you know, I, I always ask at the, at the end for kind of a, out of a, you know, one, one to ten rating, you know, give it a rating. And I got lots of, lots of nines, lots of tens. Uh, my favorite comment was from an accountant who said, like, all of this was dead on. And uh, thanks for saving them a lot of time trying to refigure all of this out. So accounting for land investors can be found at, uh, you know, well, it's going to be on uh, the Land Geek soon. But for now, it's also at scotttodd.net forward slash accounting. There you go. There you go. So last, was it last week we were talking about tips of the week? Yeah. And, and we did a poll in the mastermind group. And we wanted to ask, like, okay, you know, what do you want for your tips of the week? Do you want the buffet? Do you want, you know, all kind of continue doing our tips of the week? Do you want um, just like in, you know, one tip of the week and perhaps like just getting back to fundamentals, like just a valuable tip? Or, you know, do you want Mike and Eric to just do the tips of the week, switch off every week (laughs) and have the rest of us make fun of it? Well, they're clearly going to want the, the buffet. I feel it. They're the overwhelming the response. I really thought everybody was going to go with the buffet. The overwhelming response was <laughs> Eric and Mike. Three <laughs> 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 the tips of the week. I, I, I think to be fair, I think Mike should start this week and then we'll go to Eric next week. We'll just kind of switch off. This way people that, aren't that, overwhelmed. That's kind not of a compliment, tips. right? Is that a reverse? That's kind of a compliment or I don't know. It's, you keep telling yourself. It is. That. Obviously, we, we do the best, Mike. So that's, that's why the community <laughs> wants to hear from us. Enter God's cup of water. <laughs> <laughs> Mike is making fun of my, uh, <laughs> my yeah. cup. I'm, I mean, I got to listen to these quotes <laughs> once a week from Mike or once every other week from Mike Zeno. Oh. Oh, I thought I was getting I, out of them. <laughs> you just got more of them. Oh, Lord. Well, I think this really gives us a nice opportunity to really take our time now and just really pick apart whatever Mike and Eric say is their tip of the week. I, got a which good is gonna be I, mean, I think it's rock super solid. Fun. We'll it's be able what to the people want. This is what, this is what the people want. But wait, wait, wait. wait. They, listen, they, they said tips of the week, not quotes of the week. Uh, well, they know, they know my tip is a quote. I don't I think know. We about need to that. have a second poll here. Yeah, tips <laughs> or quotes. I mean, <laughs> it is a quote a tip. Yeah. Now there were some really good comments about what else we could do, um, and we might, you know, switch to that. But for now, I do think we should just try out what the what the group wants, and just switch off between those two guys. No one's going to give you too overwhelmed, too many tips, and yet we're going to have a blast. 
just roasting their tip every single week. I think my screen just froze. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> as, Mike, as Mike be- literally becomes frozen. Right. It might, yeah. <laughs> so, um, moving on from the tips of the week in the poll, Scott Todd had an interesting case study. Let's discuss it, Scott. What, what happened? All right, Mark. So, what happened was in December, I bought some property from a guy that I've bought properties from before. And um, I don't know, we bought, we bought, quite a number of them. And it so happens that we were able to sell one of them very quickly. You know, so we, we basically marketed it to our buyers list. We had a buyer come up, buy the property. And when he went out to look at the property, he discovered that there were basically people on the property, you know? And so he talked to them and it turned out that they claimed that they had bought the property years ago from the guy that I bought them from, from my seller, bought it on terms and they paid them off like $10,000. They paid them off and uh, they never got their deed. Well, I have the deed. It's recorded in my company name now and they were not too happy, nor, nor was my buyer happy uh, about the whole process. And so they contacted us saying that they owned the land and uh, they wanted us to give them the deed but I own the property. Like the deed is in my name. So like, what are we doing here, Mark? Well, let's, let's start with Eric. Eric, in this situation, first of all, has this ever happened to you? Never happened to me, no. Okay, well, given that situation, how, what would be your first instinct on how to handle that? Well, I think my first instinct would be to um, reach back out to the seller I bought it from and and ask what was going on. Um, you know, I think Scott mentioned that um, the the person he sold the property to had a conversation with the people on the land and they told that buyer who they bought it from. So, you know, you'd kind of have that information in hand and know that, hey, you know, the, the seller I bought from is actually the seller that supposedly sold the land to the people that are living there. I mean, I would just want to make it right as quickly as I could. Um, so yeah, I'd be on the phone with that seller and trying to work it out very quickly and, and reassuring everybody involved that we'll get it worked out. How do you handle your, your new buyer that was all excited about this property that it, it apparently has squatters on it? I'd probably give them back, um, his money um, probably as soon as I had any additional information, hopefully within, you know, 24 hours, if not sooner and um, try to convert him to another property. You know, I'd offer him his money back, but you know, say, do you want something else I have and and talk to him about other available properties? I mean, I'd hate to lose the buyer, but ultimately I want the the people happy. So um, I'm going to go out of my way to, to make sure I can keep them happy. Yeah, Scott, when he said that, were you thinking what I was thinking where he would not only just refund the buyer, but he would ask, he would ask them, do you want me to continue giving you tips of the week? I I, I don't. Just to make them happy. I I don't think that Eric did that. No, no, just, just more value. Right. No, no. You know, he he could have said, Hey, listen, not pro. No, he could have said though, is he could have said, Hey buyer, even though I'm going to give you your money back, if you just still pay me a dollar a month, you'll get these like cool messages every month from this website called geekpay.io. <laughs> that, that would really be creative there. I love the way you just plug geekpay.io. Yeah. See what I did? There? I, I, yeah, I appreciate cool. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Tate Litchfield, what would you do in that situation? You know, I'd, I'd do the same thing. Uh, Eric just said, obviously I'd reassure everyone that, I had no idea that this is happening and this is kind of out of my control, but I was going to do my best to make it right. And I think that would go a long way with your new buyer explaining to him, Hey, there was some confusion. There was a mix up from the guy that I got the property from legally. I can't sell you the property because somebody else should own this land. And I don't want to make, you know, any decisions that uh, aren't in the, in your best interest. So I think it's an opportunity to, you know, earn some trust and maybe get a, another buyer, you know, have him buy something immediately or, or down the road. But, uh, 
I would definitely let him know that you're going to get first right of refusal on my next one in this area again. So, and then I'd charge the, charge the guy that you're redeeding the property to a big old fat dock fee is what I would do. Let him know that, Hey, nothing's free when you work for Scott Todd. There you go. There you go. Mike Zeno, what would be your approach? Oh, this this kind of reminds me of Tate's um, case study a, a few weeks back, and it's like, you know, this ethical kind of moral dilemma you have someone. But I think I'd 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 probably have to merge the two of what the two of them just said, uh, Tate and Eric. You know, first verify, right? I mean, who knows what's really going on here? This guy's going to have to produce something, right? Somebody's going to have to produce some sort of agreement, uh, some sort of document, some sort of something. And if that <laughs> is in fact produced, then yeah, it comes down to clear communication. I think that uh, I would definitely look to probably refund and uh, get my money back and, you know, or, you know, that's kind of weird, right? Because if you're going to, you know, you're going to have to get your money back from the other guy or this guy, someone's going to have to pay you, right? Because you're, you've already paid for the property. So there's going to be some money transacted somewhere, right? Before that goes in that direction. But it's a good chance to build a solid relationship with someone and let them know that, uh, you know, that you stand behind your word and, that's a tough one. That's, that's not an everyday occurrence. I'll tell you that much. That's, that's a very uh, unique situation. So I'm really curious how Scott handled it. Well, Barry and Aaron, how, how, what would you do? Well, I really don't have anything new to add. Everybody covered it pretty well. Um, I would say that, you know, honesty and communication is the key. And, um, you know, it sounds like the guy that Scott bought the property from, is one of these guys that we run into sometimes that has just tons and tons of properties and, you know, he, he sold it and it just got lost in the shuffle and that sort of thing. So it was an honest mistake, but you know, this guy's probably somebody that, you know, you also want to handle with care as far as the deal goes too, because, you know, obviously we talked about our buyer who we sold the property to and, and creating trust and that sort of thing. And, you know, I definitely agree with all that, but we definitely want to preserve, I think, the relationship with the person that we bought the property from, too, by handling that with some care, too, because it sounds like this guy's got a lot of properties and he's, you know, a good source for, you know, for intake, deal intake uh, for the future and that sort of thing. So um, I would just, you know, try to try to work both sides like that so that uh, everybody is as happy as possible. You know, you know, what's interesting about all these answers, and this is, I think, the, the beauty of our land investing niche, is not one person said, the first thing I would do is call my real estate lawyer. Not one of you. It wasn't even a thought. But if this were a multifamily deal, if this were a, a mobile home park deal, if this were a house, the first thing you would do is, is you'd have to engage a real estate attorney to figure out what do we do in this situation, right? But we didn't have to do that. And I think what Scott said in the very beginning of the story is I bought lots of properties from this seller in the past. So there's already a relationship. There's already established trust. And it's very simple for Scott to go back and rewind this tape. So Scott, what did you do? So Mark, what we did was uh, we said, okay, listen, uh, to our buyer. Let's go back. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll get back in touch with it. We called the seller immediately who said, uh, that's weird. Let me check on it. He called us a day later and said, it's true. We sold the land on a contract to these guys. Uh, we messed up. We should have never of, of, um, sold that property to you and we will give you your money back. So I'm waiting for them to mail me my money back, right? In the meantime, we told our seller, or I'm sorry, our buyer, we said to the buyer, hey, listen, this is a screw up, not on our part, but on the guy that we bought the land from. We're sorry. Again, you have two options. We can either refund you your money or we can um, you know, move you to a different property. And he's like, no, all cool. I'll take another property. Here's the one I want. So we just moved him over. And then to the people that we helped out, uh, basically here, we did charge a doc fee to 49. Good we did you. charge $10 consideration. Uh, <laughs> so we got $259 out of the deal. And uh, 
you know, to them, we are like heroes, right? Because they had not been able to, um, to get this done. And they were really, really, really thinking the worst case scenario when, when they figured out that we now own the property. Mark, almost probably to what you were thinking, like they're probably going to have to engage an attorney or something. And we said, look, no problem. It, it happens. All good. We'll transfer the property to you after we get our, um, our payment. We want to make sure that we're, we're made whole first. And then what was really, really cool is they had never like heard about me or, you know, website or anything. And, but all of a sudden we're there, we're their heroes. And we picked up a sale uh, for a property in that same area from one of their friends that was looking because of how honest and easy and kind of heroic we really were. Heroic's the word. I, I, I have a way. tear starting to well up and roll yeah. down. Can yeah. you say heroic again, like Scott? I like how heroic. you said that. Heroic. heroic. But, you know, but you, know, you know, all joking aside, that really does establish a lot of credibility, a lot of trust, because these are long-term relationships. And it's sad when... The very first instinct is I got a lawyer up, right? Um, and to be able to, to, you know, calm all the parties down and make it right for everybody is, is really pretty special. Uh, Eric, what were you going to say? Well, I was just going to add, you know, I think it's important to, to kind of think about the other side of what could have happened. And that could be that, you know, there was someone on this land that, that maybe defaulted or, you know, wasn't even supposed to be there. And then that would have been a whole different headache to, to have to deal with. But um, it very easily could have gone that way. Yeah, I mean, Tate and I had that issue with a squatter and it wasn't fun. Yeah. But we, we you know, went through the proper channels and the sheriff got him off the property. Um, but it did cost some money. How much did that cost, Tate? I think around a thousand bucks. About a thousand bucks. That was not great. No, nah, um, but we didn't lose. We didn't lose, but it's just, you know, one of the costs of doing business. Uh, I, can, I can tell you, uh, how many people have, have double deeded property in the past? And you get that terrible assessor letter saying, you don't, you can't deed this. Scott, yep, I, did I did it. Yeah. Mike? Yeah, I've done it. Yeah. Yeah. And again, you know, it's interesting how when you make that mistake and you own up to it right away and you call your, your buyer, and you give them the option, you're like, look, I'm going to make this right and refund your money, or I can exchange it for this property. How much more they, they are, you know, they, they feel this bond with you and your company. Is that what happened to you, Scott? Yeah, it's, you know, like um, instantly they realize that they're not going to have to fight and you are a good guy. And all of a sudden, you know, like you'll, you'll get messages like, man, you really restored my faith in humanity uh, you know, man, man, you are the real deal. And it's amazing how many people, you don't even realize like how many people you get to buy land from you, from somebody that, that knows somebody that all of a sudden they want to do the right thing because you're doing the right thing. Yeah, absolutely. Tate, did you have that experience? Yeah. Mea culpa, right? I called the person. I said, Hey, this is a mistake on, on nobody's end, but my own. And I am so sorry. Here's how I'm going to fix it for you. And I found that if you go to somebody with some bad news, but you present to them, you know, a solution or a workaround, something that's going to leave them happy again, then they're more than, you know, they understand that, hey, mistakes happen. It was a clerical mistake. We messed up and here's what we're going to do. I've never yeah. had anybody get really, really upset. I've had people tell me, you know, that's kind of unacceptable. And I said, you're right, it is. You know, we should be doing better than that. That shouldn't have happened. And you know, I, I owned it. And uh, ultimately, they still uh, transferred that money onto something different. And they were happy. Yeah, yeah. How about you, Mike? Yeah, no, very similar. And I think it's just it points to good business practice as, as a kind of a uh, kind of something similar. We were going away to a bed and breakfast soon. And we had booked it and we never heard back from them. So I called them, they had just gotten back from Hawaii. And so they hadn't confirmed and they said, like, I'm gonna upgrade you to our best room. You know, and it's that kind of, you know, they didn't have to. I was happy that, you know, I understand. I know what it's like running a business, but similar, like Tate said, you know, you make a little, you know, you step up to the plate and you do something extra. You look at glue gift, as you would say, something just to kind of bring it to another level and show them. Um, so it's an opportunity to really make more 
sales and develop more trust and and prove that we really are uh, you know a great company to work with so we, it's a good time to shine in those moments yeah absolutely and it's, it's such a simple thing to do to take full responsibility yet oftentimes what you'll find like in my experience is before they take full responsibility they give me an excuse on why this happened but I'm already mad at that point right, right. and I'm just gonna get a little more angry that you know, you're giving me some type of excuse where Tate's like, there are no excuses. You know, I'm so sorry this happened to you. And if I was in your shoes, I'd feel the exact same way. And this is the way that I would want to have it handled for me. And this is the way I'd like to have it handled for you. Let me know what, you know, you think about it. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, somebody who gets me, so you, just, <laughs> you know, immediately feel better. Right. right. Um, I know Bearland Aaron, you know, is non-combative, but uh, have you ever had that issue happen where, you know, somebody kind of wrongs you and starts giving excuses on why it was wrong instead of taking full responsibility? Oh, Besides yeah. maybe the, the kids? Yeah, I've had employees before, so yeah. Um, yeah, and it, it, start, it just wears you down. Like you just as soon as you start hearing that you kind of tune it out because it's like, yeah, I've heard this before. You're not trying to fix anything. You're just trying to tell me why you screwed up, you know? And it's like, I want to know how it's going to get fixed not why it happened. You know I mean? Maybe sometimes why it happens important so you can avoid it in the future, but you know, there's a difference there and you, yeah, you just, you, you want solutions you know, and that shows somebody that's willing to work with you and to, to build trust and that sort of thing when solutions are offered rather than, you know, just plain old excuses. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Eric Peterson, what about you? Yeah. I mean, I've never had to deal with that in this business yet. Um, but at least to that degree of, you know, having to tell someone I couldn't sell them a property that I sold them. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think the right thing is to take full responsibility and, um, you know, don't, don't worry about making excuses, worry about making it right and give them options to, um, to try and, uh, you know, make up for it really. Um, so ultimately we just want to keep our customers happy and, uh, you know, kind of do what it takes. Yeah, absolutely. You, you know, you golden rule it and everything turns out pretty well and you get a, you get a customer for life. Right. Um, yet somehow I don't, you know, I don't know why most companies can't do that. I think it's legal reasons. They can't take responsibility. That's gotta be it. Right. It's just fear. I mean, Mike, is that what, what it is? Um, yeah. I mean, well, there's not, not everybody's, you know, especially in real estate. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's, I think when people realize that uh, we are transparent and we are honest and, you know, there's a breath of fresh air that they breathe. You can hear people on the phone taking a deep breath in, deep breath out. I mean, you, we kind of break the mold with the way that we do business. And, I, and that's what I like about our community. So I wouldn't say it's rampant because there's so many people out there that will take advantage of people. So I don't think, you know, there are a lot of good people out there too, right? But there's also a lot of people that just aren't scrupulous and people get used to that, unfortunately, like it's a new normal and it doesn't have to be. And uh, we can prove that it's not, you know, or uh, we can show them a better way at least. Yeah. Yeah. Tate. Yeah. And that's, you know, that kind of goes with the fact that every single person who's doing this is doing it for themselves, right? They're their own boss. They run their own business here and you can earn that trust and show people that, Hey, you're just a guy who's making an asset available for the, you know, for a majority of people out there by offering them, you know, a 90 day money back guarantee or an exchange policy, all of these things that set you apart from everyone else in this business. And, and I think that, like Mike said, that, that goes a long way. People want to work with individuals that they trust. And, and I think that's so important. I mean, we always tell our, client, our customers that, hey, I don't want you to buy something that you don't want to have. I want you to love your property. And if you don't love your property, then you need to let me know so I can make it right. And when I tell people that, there's this sense of fear that just gets lifted. And I think they're more likely to do business with me because I'm an honest guy. I don't want you, I don't want you to buy something you don't love. You know, you're going to have to pay me too much money over too, too long a time 
on something you don't love. So love it. And if you don't, we'll fix it. Yeah, absolutely. And that totally differentiates you because of that compassionate style from like a Scott Todd. Exactly. Right? And yes. then they just kind of all go that way. Contrary to popular belief, I'm, I'm a nice guy. <laughs> Scott's, <laughs> Scott's thinking of his retort right now. I see the wheel spinning. I, I think I got him flat footed. No, you didn't. No, I, 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 oh. I listen, I, I, whatever. It's all good. I know the truth. The eagle has landed. Yeah, see? <laughs> I know oh, the no. truth, man. See now, now we now we move into <laughs> listen. Now we move into the tip of the week. Since since uh, everybody's chiming in, I'm gonna deflect it. Let's go to the tip of the week and let's see a real tip and not a quote, Mike Zana. Well, how about some advice? <laughs> That's it, <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Mike's advice. Can we get a theme song for this? Talk? And now it's let's time for music. Uncle Mike's advice. Mike's advice. <laughs> Eric, on the guitar, could you play a little uh, intro? Uh, <laughs> on the guitar? <laughs> how, wait a minute. How did, how did Barrel and Aaron not get into the rotation for tips of the week? I know. I nominate him. Let's nominate him right now. I, well, I think, we'll I, think the poll I think it's uh, I don't think it's a new, to- uh, new poll. I think we rotate between Mike Zeno <laughs> and Barrel and Aaron. I think that's fair. <laughs> oh, you're so Team Scott. It's unbelievable. No, what are you Eric can about? just do no wrong in Scott Todd's oh. eyes. Literally, literally, this this guy. I mean, like, yeah, Team Tate. Oh my gosh, what's hey, that? Jeff, De- you Jeff need Detmer. Another one of these? Do you need Mark, another maybe, one, Scott? I'm, I'm sensing hey, that. Every Je- time by I'm the way, Jeff Detmer is coming back to Vegas boot camp. And if Jeff, if you're listening to this, um, my my name is with a K for Team Mark for Team Land Geek. See, but Just, Jeff, you, what, you got to watch the video because everybody on this call is using one, right? I mean, Scott, uh, I'm yeah, not. I'm not. Zeno I left my. Is, I left mine in, in San Antonio. In the bottom portion. I. I just but don't know. But every time you write something down, you think of me. And no, no, I don't. My, my mine was left in San Antonio. That's, a this, lot like my mug was left in. <laughs> this is my glue <laughs> gift. I send a glue gift to yeah. people. It's a note on this paper. They're like, "Who's Tate? Who the heck is Tate guy?" <laughs> Yep. <laughs> you, you got that for donating to a charity, didn't you, Mike? <laughs> yeah. By, by the way, speaking of Tate, um, today's podcast, podcast is sponsored by, and not Tate Litchfield Folio.com, TL Folio.com. It is not that for Tate Litchfield, right? So go there, start looking at some notes to invest in, especially with QRP money. And if you've come to bootcamp, you know what we're talking about. If you haven't come to bootcamp, go to landgeek.com forward slash bootcamp and find out what you're missing. Um, all right, Mike. Yeah. What's your tip? What's your tip of the week? Well, I'm gonna, I guess this is so easy for us. Yeah, this, this is uh, actually some advice. So it's not a, really a quote and I'm going to give it to you in like, uh, from a famous, uh, thanks Scott. He went, he went dark. So I don't have to worry about that. But, uh, first I'll give you the kind of uh, Asian version and then I'll give you the, my interpretation. So basically it's a quote from Lao Tzu and it says, if you don't change direction, you may end up where you're heading. So I think that's really important. Let me give you the American version is be careful what you practice. You might get good at it, right? That's something that you know, when we do our business, right? There's, you know, it's really comes down to repeatable, redundant process. And we can get caught if we're not careful in a repeatable, redundant process that isn't productive, right? We could end up doing things that uh, over and over again that we shouldn't, we should delegate, we should automate, but we think, hey, it's only going to take me, it literally takes me uh, a minute to do this, right? But that's a minute times if you're going to do a couple hundred deals, a couple thousand deals. I mean, that's a, that's a lot of time. It's going to add up. So I think it's important to uh, be careful what you practice because you might get good at it and just always re-examine your daily activities so uh, yeah you come back scott now that's that's my I, you know i like that because i'll never forget as a kid i took uh tennis lessons and my tennis coach uh looked at me he said practice is not perfect i'm like what do you mean because i always hear practice is perfect he's like no perfect practice is perfect and yeah. you know as i was practicing he would adjust you know my stance my grip my swing and then he's like okay now you're doing it perfectly now you practice it this way and, uh, you know, I got pretty good. Pretty See, I brought you, good. Brought you back to a nostal- little nostalgia there. See, I, I, well, it was really nice, right? I brought you back to a fine moment in life. And <sighs> Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I'm also my own horn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, you know, the deliberate practice of, let's say, county research, right? Yes. If you don't understand how to do county research and you're practicing it, you know, incorrectly, um, 
you're never going to get better at it, right? And that's uh, like arguably the most important part because it all starts there, right? Uh, oh, look at Alexa just said absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. I don't understand who just. <laughs> Alexa, <laughs> order Mark Podolsky a Mavic DJ Pro. <laughs> Ordering now. <laughs> Ordering now. It said absolutely. You, right when it's verification. Do you, do you confirm? Right. I would, I would um, love to like be able to hack into Mike Zano's Alexa and like have it say stuff like randomly. <laughs> what would you have it say? That's not a tip. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds awful like Boston Powers. <laughs> oh man, forget it. I'm not going there. Bear, no, Bear, Bearland Aaron, what do you think of the tip? Yeah, I think it's a pretty good tip. Um, whoa, whoa. I mean, it's not pretty good, huh? Okay. It's not an air table, but it's a pretty good tip because um, it, if you take it to heart, um, it's very useful because think about it. You can practice a lot of things and get really good at them, but they're not the right things. You know, um, you can, you can practice procrastination, you know, instead of doing the things you need to do and you're going to get really good at it. So, um, yeah, it's a pretty good tip. We should all like meditate on it after the call and, uh, and put it into practice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Tate, what do you think of that tip? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> It was fantastic. He nailed it. It was a home run. Uh, you know, it might be the accent. I'm just a sucker for it. Anytime that <laughs> accent comes out and spills inspiration on me, I'm like, yes, yes, Mike. Just, I know what you're saying. Yeah, I can relate it, to that. It, it just it just washes over you, doesn't it? It's a warmth. It's a when warmth. It speaks, it's a warmth. Uh, and I, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I loved it. It was good. <laughs> all right well let's let's get eric peterson what'd you think because oh, next next week I, it's on I you why we call it a tip it, it was a quote there's no doubt about it but it's advice 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 it's advice still a quote it started off with a quote mike come on <laughs> but it was good i mean we can all build bad habits around you know things we shouldn't be doing in the business or what have you and um you know, you got to watch out for those things and, and um, you know, do it the right way or do it differently. So, good. You know, if I could insert a song right here, be ain't nothing going to break my stride. Ain't nothing going to slow <laughs> me down. Oh. But I, Don't I build bad habits around good intentions. <laughs> wow. Yeah. There you go. Don't build bad habits someone's, around good intentions. Someone's trying like to that. steal my thunder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, well you, I, I do think the listeners should have like, me. yeah, I do think the listeners should have like a real tip. So I'm, <laughs> I'm just going to say switchboardaudio.com. I want you guys to check it out. Switchboard. Um, you know, if you're doing a, like a conference call with your team, it might be a cool way to go. Switchboardaudio.com. Check it out. Phil, my, my apologies because I know you don't want too many tips. Are you sure? Oh, switch. Oh, not Swift. Switch. Switchboard. All right, well, I thought this was a great roundtable. And to the listeners, I just want to remind you, the only way that, you know, Eric and Mike are even going to show up every week now is if you do us three little favors, you got to subscribe, you got to rate, you got to review the podcast, send us a screenshot of the review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 Passive Income Launch Kit. And if you like, we could even add as a bonus a free 30-minute call with the Zen master himself. And at the end of that call, a free, I guess we can't really call it a tip. It's a um, free quote. Let's call a free it free quote. A free quote. Yeah. He, Mike, how's that sound? They're in he demand. I, I had one on office hours last night. They demanded a quote before I got logged off. You guys can all watch. I mean, were they chanting? Were they chanting? Quote, 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 quote. quote. Sort of felt that way. So then you know what Mike did? Let me tell you what Mike did. He jumped on Google. No. <laughs> he broke open the fortune cookie. Oh. Half of it. <laughs> read, the, oh. read the fortune cookie. And then they were like, wow, 
okay, thanks. And then he got off the air and then he ate the other half of the fortune cookie. It was a good quote. You, I, I, maybe I shouldn't reveal it here. It was a pretty good one. We'll, we'll save, save it in two weeks because, you know, Eric's got – Eric's up next week. Yeah, right. And then we'll have to do another poll, like, if Bearland Aaron should be in the, uh, the rotation. <laughs> no, the Ta- people have I, spoken. Mark, I have, I have like, like, you know, no doubt that Eric's tip is going to be a home run. I mean, because, like, the, the Zen master has set the bar so low. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Oh. You know, even – you know, when it comes to uh, uh, why would he say that? <laughs> when it comes to Eric, like Eric could literally, like we could be at boot camp, like Eric could literally stab me in the neck with a fork, and Scott would be like, "Well, you probably deserved it for all the." I'd be like, "Mark, what'd you do?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. Why'd like, you push your neck on his fork? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah ex- there it is. Why did you push your neck on his fork? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, listen, boy. listen, uh, you know, Mike, I do enjoy the tips. You know, it's not, uh, it's not really meant to be like, you know, bad stuff, but uh, I mean, you know, it's a, it's a valid question. It is a tip a quote? I mean, I think that the Facebook audience should, should agree. <laughs> All right, Scott, you're going to you're gonna have to go to the, to the group. All right. Well, I want, I want to thank all the listeners and, um, Again, today's podcast is sponsored by TLfolio.com. All right, you guys ready? Ready. Should we do this? One, One two, two, three. Let, let, let freedom, freedom ring. 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 Horrible. <laughs> so what are, you, what are you guys all going to do with your, your, freedom, your freedom now? I'm going to go bike ride to lunch. It's beautiful out. It's like 78 today. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know what I'm doing, but lunch is on the menu. I juiced it today. Juiced, nice. Yeah. Must be out of fish up there. Well, the lakes froze. <laughs> They're all inside. See, box. They're all see. inside. Box of water cup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's all the fish right there. there I know Lake Michigan drained into that cup. <laughs> Look, keep going, keep going. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. <laughs> you know, I'm, you know, you're, not, hey, you're never going to hear me talking, say I'm dehydrated. At least you're talking about Mark and not, uh, you know, about somebody else. I mean, you're getting, giving him free publicity here with his mug. Well, should we team be Tate. talking about Scott? No, I, no, no, no. No, okay. Scott and his mug, or Team Tate and his mug. The Archibalds? No. Oh what, what is that? I, Here, I got closer for you. I know you looks like a body. bunch of garbage on there. We call him the eagle, but his visions. I, I had I had one of those, and uh, I couldn't even sell it. It was so bad. Can you believe they let that guy get a pilot's license? Oh, yeah. See. I know. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to have to have like a, a separate room at the next boot camp for, for Jeff Detmer and Karen and, and uh, Ken Archibald, and they'll just, yeah. you know talk about the highlights of working with Tate. They, they, can, they, they can, we'll just call it uh, TateCon. Hey, I Tate, like it. There it is, TateCon. I there like it. Yeah. That's not bad. All right, I just bought the uh, domain. Sorry, Tate. <laughs> Bummer. Okay. TateCon. All right. Thanks, guys. Eric, what are you, you going to do anything fun now? No, I got to go pick up my son in uh, about an hour here. So just catch up on some stuff and then off to do that. All right, and, you, and we're all agreed on the dirt rich cover. We prefer the yellow and orange over the green. Simple cover, is that correct? Eric Bearland Aaron says yes. Yeah. Wait, which one? Mike says no. I think I liked the the. Fancy I was outvoted. One. I was outvoted. I I liked the the uh, one that everybody else didn't really pick, but I, my um, wife likes that one. Was that the mountain ones? Yeah. There's awesome. the mountain one, and then there's like the simple one with like the dirt and it's green. No, I like the mountain one. I like the mountain oh. one. I'm with Mike. The mountain one. I like the yes. mountain one. Yeah, My wife yellow. likes the one that's not yellow. I think everybody liked the, and, the one. And with Eric's the wife on. likes the one that, that doesn't have a photo. It? Can I show it? This one, sure. right? Yeah, that, that yeah. one we all liked. Yeah, oh, that's, that's the one. Oh, it was, then it was coming across wrong because that one came first and everybody was saying the first one. I thought they were for. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm on the same page. Yeah. Okay. Scott, yeah. You, like that? you like the one with the yellow and orange? 
Yeah, the, the first one, the one with the mountains, the pictures, not just the tag. I, I like Can the you zoom in on that? I think I see an eagle yeah, that's it. in the background. That's it. There is an eagle. There, there is, is an, an eagle. eagle. <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect. Yeah. Oh, yeah, now, now Eric's going to take that off. You open it's it just gonna, and it caws at you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be like a little Easter, Easter egg on the cover. It's just like a little picture of, of Scott Todd Why is flying so majestically. Just, just, convert, just convert that from the eagle to a little plane, and that, that will be me. He's already carved really? into the mountain. Yeah, I can't believe you guys didn't see oh, it. See? Oh, see, yeah, yeah, there oh, you go, like Mount Rushmore. Oh, yeah, yeah, Mount Mount Scott Moore. <laughs> Mount, Mount Scott Moore. I like that. I like so, that. does the round table get an advanced copy so we can do a a review a on the video? show? Oh, yeah, only, absolutely. Only nineteen ninety five. <laughs> Plus shipping you. handling. So yeah, Plus, for you, just as an age. age. Yeah, yeah. Two, Plus, it's too far, Mark. It's too far. <laughs> it's too. The postal office doesn't go out to his house. I know. Hey. I have to. E- I have to email Bearline Air in the PDF. Yeah, well, like, there's well, no other way he'll get it. Even our yeah, post office closes at noon. What? Oh my god! Because they're so they're not busy enough. They close at noon. I got to go to the next town. Our PO box is actually in a different town just because I can get to it. Then that's a seven-hour drive right there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's this, a seven-hour well, buggy, buggy ride anyway. Yeah. This has really devolved. All right. Bye, guys. See ya.